everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. First off, I just want to say a huge welcome and thank you. This little corner of the internet has really grown in the last few weeks and I'm so excited to have so many new subscribers hanging out here on my channel. So welcome. On that note, I have also decided I want to provide perks to those of you who want them. So I have created a Patreon. Please don't feel obligated to join as my twice a week videos here will not be going anywhere. But if you are interested, I have some great perks like early release ad free videos, bonus progress picks, monthly zoom chats, a discord server and more. So if you want to check out my Patreon, the link is down below in the description. And whether or not you join again, thank you so much just for being here and watching these videos. You are all wonderful. And now onto this year's sewing plans. If you watched last week's video on my 2020 costuming year in review, you will have seen that 2020 was actually a pretty great year as far as my sewing projects were concerned. I completed a lot more sewing projects than normal since everything else that I normally do was closed most of the year. So it really makes me wonder as things start opening up and getting back to normal in 2021, how much time will I actually have to sew? Thus, I don't know if I will actually be able to complete all of my 2021 sewing plans, but it's nice to dream, right? And because I am very much a planner, I naturally have most of the projects I want to complete already planned out in some way or other. So let's dive in and take a look at the sewing projects I hope to accomplish this year. First, as an overarching sewing goal, now that I've organized my sewing room and have seen how much fabric I actually have, I'm really hoping to sew a lot from the stash. And many of these projects are specifically linked to fabrics within my stash. The project I'm about to start on is an 1880s bustle gown. I found this red and white striped cotton in the Christmas section at Joanne's a couple months ago and knew it would work great for historical things. At first, once I decided that it should be a bustle dress, I was going to make this 1887 fashion plate, which is the same one Sostein used to create her black and white bustle dress last year. But I knew there were things I wanted to change about it because that ruffle going around the upper back and framing the chest would look really unflattering on me. So I started looking at some other fashion plates to combine it with. I found this plate, which is from Peterson's Magazine in June of 1876, and fell in love with the way the stripes were used on the skirt trimming. But I knew I wanted to do 1880s. So as I was sketching out a design that combined that skirt with other pieces from other plates, I was browsing Pinterest, as you do, and came across this gorgeous 1884 plate from La Mode Illustrée. I'm going to combine the 84 and 76 plates together, basically using the skirt trimming from the 76 plate with everything else from the 84 plate. I'm super excited to get started. I'm hoping to finish this one before Valentine's Day since the colors seem most fitting for that or for Christmas and obviously I've missed the Christmas deadline by quite a bit. If I finish this first project on time, I want to make something cozy while the weather is still cool. There are two options here. I would like to try to return to my Daniel Deronda writing habit, which is a project that has been on my to make list for literally years. In fact, I purchased a light blue wool fabric for this several years ago, but it has been pushed off again and again. I finally had mocked up the bodice for it last year, just before it was announced that costume college was canceled. And when the cancellation was announced, I just couldn't bear to work on it anymore. And when I was rolling up my fabrics last month, I started to doubt that what I had purchased all those years ago was really right for this project after all. So if I decide it is right, then I'm going to try to finally make the writing habit in February or early March of this year. But if it's not right, I think I'm going to use the same lightweight light blue wool to make a version of the 1890s antique tea gown I shared last summer, which I will link up above and down below in the description. I know I don't want to make mine out of brown linen though, and probably not linen at all, so a lightweight blue wool sounds just about perfect for it. So one of those two projects will hopefully go in this time slot. Following that, I am looking forward to sewing a nice springy project. I recently found this silk taffeta for an absolute steal at Joann's of all places. Who knew that they had random flat folds that sometimes include actual silk taffeta? This fabric pattern and color story just screamed 1830s to me, but I've done a few earlier 30s dresses already, so I've decided to switch it up just a bit and go for something very late 1830s. I haven't yet decided on the exact look of this gown, but it will be something along the lines of these three fashion plates. 
I have nine yards of this fabric to play with, so there's tons of fabric to spare. By the time I finish this project, we'll probably be starting to get into warmer weather. Also, I will probably want a break from these bigger projects by then. So as my first late spring slash early summer project, I hope to make a 1950s dress from some very adorable Bambi print cotton I picked up last year. That will be followed by a nice stash busting bustle project. I have 10 yards of this lightweight striped white cotton fabric that really wants to be made into a frothy early 1870s bustle dress. Something kind of like one of these fashion plates, but in mostly white with some pastel trim. Ideally, when I make this, I would also like to make an actual crinolette, which is an early 1870s skirt support that looks like this, kind of a cross between a crinoline and a bustle. I've been making do with my Franken crinolette for my other early 1870s gowns, but since this would wind up being my fourth gown of that era, it's probably time that I finally make the proper skirt supports. By late summer, I hope to attempt to make an exact reproduction of an antique piece I have in my collection, a white and blue windowpane super lightweight 19 teens dress. I have not yet acquired the fabric for this dress, so I'll really be keeping my eyes peeled over the next several months. As a precursor to this project, I will be sharing the extant dress as an examining antiques video, so do be sure you're subscribed so that you know when that video goes up, and all of these other project videos, of course. After summer, it's time for Halloween sewing! My 2020 Halloween projects were not very gothy or spooky, and I really want to remedy that in 2021. I don't have a plan for what the project will be yet, but I'm thinking a vintage or Victorian fancy dress project like I did in 2020, but picking out something more spooky or more in the black and orange type theme. Potentially, this could also just switch to being my spooky, strawberry-esque dress that I had planned to make last year, assuming that I can actually find the correct fabric next fall. By late fall, I will really need to get started on my Christmas dress. I plan to finally make Felicity's blue Christmas dress next year. I have swatched the fabric from Silk Baron, though I haven't ordered it yet because I never spend that much on fabric, so I'm nervous about pulling the trigger, but they're the only ones with blue silk taffeta. I've wanted this dress since I first read Felicity's Christmas book, so I think it finally has to happen this year. There is also one bonus project that I would like to add in sometime this year, though I don't know when. I've been wanting to make this natural form dress for a while. I bought the fabric for it a few years ago, then wound up using the solid periwinkle for my fairy godmother bustle in 2019, but last year I won five yards of the same shade from one of Fancy Styles Fabrics Lives and have since purchased a few extra yards, so I'm ready to make this dress again. I was originally going to make it as my first project of 2021, but decided to put it on hold because in a time when we're only able to hold outdoor events, Silk natural form gowns with long trains are just not practical. So I may scooch it in somewhere in my to-do list for this year once indoor events are back on, or maybe if costume college is able to happen this year. And if we don't get to that point, then I guess this will become a 2022 project. So as you can tell, it's quite an extensive list. And I'm sure I will wind up adding other small projects in there like upcycling thrift store finds or making skirts because I tend to get burned out if I do too many large projects all in a row, and thus I don't know that I will actually be able to accomplish all of these large projects. That said, I'm currently really excited for all of these, so at this point I am very eager to jump in and get going. What projects do you plan to make this year? Leave me a comment below and let me know! Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are looking forward to seeing hopefully all of these projects come to fruition. If you like this video, please make sure to click the thumbs up icon, and if you'd like to see all of these upcoming project videos, please be sure to click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week, with my sewing vlogs on Tuesdays and my regular content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at LadyRebeccaFashions. And if you would like to support me and all that I do on YouTube, I have links to my Patreon and my Ko-fi accounts down below in the description. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!